What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the keyword static in Swift and we're going to take a look at what it's used for, why you should care about it, and then we're also going to look at some practical examples with it. So that said, don't forget to destroy that like button down below as always. If you're a returning viewer and haven't subscribed yet, hit that button while you're at it. Let's open up Xcode and let's jump right in. So first and foremost, we're just gonna start with the playground. So I'm gonna come up here and go to File, New, and from this list, we're gonna select a playground. And let's see, we're gonna stick with a blank playground. That's totally okay. Let's go ahead and call this static playground. And let me also move this window so it's uh, nice and centered. Let's also expand this to give ourselves a little more room to work like that. And let me also bump up this font size so everyone can see this. And let's jump right in. So cool, what is static? So like I mentioned, static is a keyword and it's basically that right there. And what you can do is you can create a property or a function in a static fashion. So the way you do that in the language is simply adding the keyword static before the declaration here. And similarly for a function, you do it like this. And those are the two things that can be static. So before we actually look at uh, some more examples, uh, what is static, right? So let's see why this is complaining here. This is complaining here. Static properties may only be declared on a type. So basically what this is complaining about is we should wrap this inside of a class. And let's make sure those errors go away before we dig into concept. So essentially, um, cool, they're gone now. So essentially static actually in the world of computer science refers to the way that we're accessing the element, either the function or the property uh, in terms of its memory, right? Either we access a function on an instance of an object or we access it statically. And same goes for a property. So for those of you that need a quick refresher of what an instance is, let's say we have a car here and let's give it a empty initializer like that. And let's say we have a color and we say this is red. To get this color out of the car, we would need to say uh, car is a car and the color is car.color. This creates an instance of a car and this accesses the instance property. Now here we've got a person and a string in here. Let's actually call this, uh, Let's make this something more practical. Let's call it name. Now, if we instantiated this person, let's say Joe is a person, you would think we can do Joe.name and we actually can't. And the reason we can't do Joe.name is name is not an instance property on person. To access that property, we can simply give it the type name and the type is person. So let's say let name equals person and off of that, you can access all these static elements. So you can access things like name. And this is actually the string of uh, Joe Smith. So if we go ahead and print that out, hit Command Shift Y to open up this console and hit that run button, you'll see that we get his name printed out. Sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, playgrounds are a little finicky. So if it doesn't print out, that just means Xcode is deciding to be difficult. There it goes, okay. It's a little slow sometimes. But anyways, the key takeaway here is static is distinctly different from instances. So you can statically access a property like this or even a function call. So how would you go ahead and access this function? Uh, rather call the function, right? Because you don't really want to access it. The way you would call this function is simply just like this. You can say person dot do something. And uh, if uh, you had a function in here, in the instance example, let's say we have do something in here as well. To call it off the instance, car is our instance here, we would say car dot do something. And we're not able to say car with a capital C dot do something. Um, actually, we can say it here, but you can see that it's saying that the parameter here should be a self, which is an instance basically. The compiler is saying, I'm aware this exists, but we need to call it on an instance. 
So the key takeaway is instance versus uh, calling it on a type statically. Now, why on earth would you want to do this and why should you care? So the interesting thing about static properties and functions are it inherently gives you the ability to call a function or get a property value without constructing an instance. So let's, let's think of an example. So let's say I'm Facebook and I'm making the Facebook app. Let's say we're rebuilding it in Swift and we have a uh, Facebook user, right? And let's say they have things in here like their name and their age and a bunch of other things like their birthday, so on and so forth. And let's say I'm another team at Facebook that's implementing the Facebook search uh, part of the application to search for users. And search is traditionally done by user IDs. So let's say we searched for some username and the user ID we want to find is, um, I don't know, let's say 12, right? If we wanted to check every single user's ID, let's say we give an identifier on here, identifier, what we would have to do is, let's say we had a bunch of these users, so let me create a for loop. Users is going to be a collection of users and for x in zero to 100, we're going to create one of these users. We'll simply go ahead and append in a Facebook user like that. And if we're searching for this, um, if we're searching for target user 12, we basically would need to, let's get rid of that warning. We basically would need to instantiate every single user that comes back in the search and check their ID, right? So in this case, you can see that we're creating an instance of a hundred Facebook users here. So let's say we search for the name Joe and Facebook's database returned 10 million Joes. It's wildly inefficient to go through and instantiate every object to check a property on it. Now, in general, there's a bunch of techniques that their backend system should be doing and it shouldn't return that many results, but let's go with me with this example. So how can we simplify this? Well, one thing we can do is we can use this in a static fashion, right? So if we hold the identifier of a user statically, what we can say is uh, on the Facebook user, we can say if FB user dot identifier equals target ID, instantiate the user. In other words, we're able to check these properties without creating an instance, which in this example, it seems fairly trivial. And a question that you might ask off the bat is, well, we have this class here. This is just one definition of it. And the assignment is 12. How does this value change? You can totally change the value here. So you can actually, it's, it's just like, it's just like any other property because it's a var, you can mutate it. You can assign this to whatever you desire it to be. So it's not to say the statics cannot be changed. So it is a flexible property and it's at its core. But the beauty here is you can check these things now without having to create instances, which at scale and sometimes operations is super powerful. The other example is creating singletons. And to do that example, I'm gonna jump into a project so you can see a more real world application. So let's go ahead and close this playground and I'm gonna come up here and hit file, new, and we're gonna create a new project. We're gonna stick with a single view application and I'm gonna go ahead and call this static singleton example. Make sure your language is Swift and your lifecycle is UI kit. Go ahead and save it. I'll throw it on my desktop for the time being. And we're not gonna actually run this app since it's mostly code we're looking at. But here we're gonna jump into our view controller. And let's say we wanted a class that handled all of our API calls. Um, and let's say we called it something like API caller. So let's say we have API caller, pretty, pretty straightforward. Let's say there's some functions in here like get users, get, I don't know, data, login, status, and let's say get location. Now let's say we have uh, 40 view controllers, 40 different controllers for different screens across our app, 
and they all need to uh, make some API calls. Um, but let's say we want to only make sure the networking, the API calls that are being dispatched uh, are running uh, one at a time, right? So for example, if we're getting users, we don't want to get data. We want to wait for get, get users to come back. So let's say we add a property in here, uh, request in flight, and by default it's false. And every single time one of these gets uh, called, we're going to set this to true. And of course, when the request finishes, we would set it to false, but we're just going to omit that for this example. In every view controller, because we want to make some API calls, you need an instance of API caller. So you would do something like private uh, let's caller equals an API caller. Now you might know already, you might see it already, there is a pretty big flaw in this design. This property of request in flight belongs to this class and every time you instantiate it, it's true. So in this view controller, if I go ahead and I say uh, AP, let's see if I can get my tab correct, API caller dot get data, API caller, this guy, its property of request and flight is now true. But now if I create this, another view controller, this API caller, assuming I remove this, its request and flight property value is false. The reason is, is because these are two distinct instances. So what we essentially want to do to solve this is have a single instance, hence a singleton. So the way we solve this is fairly trivial and simple. We're going to create a property in here. It's going to be a static property and we're going to call it shared and it's going to equal one instance of an API caller object. And what we're going to do is we're going to make the initializer private for this class so nobody can call the init. You'll see we'll get an error down here. And instead of creating an instance like this, we're going to use the shared instance. And what I'll say off the bat is this is a very common pattern uh, in both Apple's code and third party code that you'll see across uh, kind of the iOS community. So what did we really do here? First of all, we made the initializer private. So only things in this class can call it. Nobody externally can create an instance of it through the initializer. Then we added a constant property called shared, which equals an instantiated object. And we made it static. What's the point of static here? So the point of static here is you don't need to instantiate API caller to get at it. You can simply say API caller dot shared. And by doing this, this instance, this instance rather, is shared across every usage site. So even though we're in this view controller here, we say get data, which makes a request and flight true. Even, even while we're in a different class here, because that flight is still running, in this other view controller, the value is still true. And that's the beauty of using static and a very common uh, approach to how it's used to create singletons. And before we wrap up, the other thing that I'll, uh, I'll share here is a different naming convention. So this shared naming convention is very popular. The other one that Apple has, uh, or Apple uses a lot is default, and then the name of the thing you're calling. So you can say API caller dot default API caller. And you might have seen this in other places in Apple's code. So for example, I think notification center is an example that we can use. So there's a notification center uh, dot default here. Uh, so I know store kit for in-app purchases also uses the same example. Um, so very, very common. Apple themselves use it. Uh, you can also make this default and just wrap it in uh, these little back ticks so it becomes accessible. If you just use default, whoops, let's get, away, get rid of my pop-up. If you just use default, it'll complain because default is a keyword. Uh, but those are the three common naming conventions that I just wanted to touch on. Theoretically, you can name it whatever the heck you'd like. But that's pretty common, uh, especially if you want to, uh, you know, work professionally in iOS. This is the convention that is used. So that's really all I had for you guys for statics. It's a quick look at what they are, how to use them, and uh, quote unquote in the wild how you'll see them. Uh, if you haven't destroyed the like button already, make sure to do so. Helps out with the YouTube algorithm quite a bit. Helps me make more videos for all of you. Uh, hit subscribe if you enjoyed the video, found it helpful. Comment any questions, suggestions, uh, anything at all. I love hearing from each and every one of you. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.